example, if you're entering information into the system, for example, a database program like a QuickBooks, something like that, would record the revenue on an accrual basis when you enter the invoice. Remember, when you enter the invoice, you usually increase the accounts receivable. The other side then go into sales or revenue at that point in time. It's done that way because the invoice is the form typically closest to the point at which the revenue was actually earned. But it may not be actually the same time period that the revenue was earned. For example, if you have a job cost type of system and you're basically billing out for your time or the time of your staff, if you're a CPA firm, a bookkeeper, or if you are a law firm, then you got to have the week or so that they're going to work at least two weeks or a month. And then you're going to be billing for the time that they worked on, the time that they did. And that means you'll be billing later on after the work was done. So it's quite possible in that case then that you send the invoice out, in this case in March, after the cutoff date, when the work was actually done in February. And theoretically then, you should be pulling that revenue back into the period in which it was earned, even though the invoice was not entered until March. So that's going to be the idea. Now, if you add inventory in on this, which we will do, then you'd think it would be more likely that the, that the revenue would be in the proper period, but it still could happen in that the invoice is going to be after the cutoff date. Now, when is the revenue earned? If you have inventory, typically when the inventory is changing hands is now owned by the customer as opposed to you as the seller. So there you might be looking at shipping documents, for example. So we're going to use the, the as if we sold inventory and the invoice went in place in the following period because it's a more complex transaction, even though it's easier to kind of visualize 